Why hello, and welcome to part two of my Post Endings World video for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice as part of my sample series. In this case, this video is being recorded and uploaded in 4K HDR at 60 frames a second. This is part two of this video, so if you haven't watched the first part, uh, I would recommend doing that. But I'm going to pick up where I left off at the Sempu Temple here right at the entrance to I guess this temple right here one of several in this area I'm just showcasing this in the environments of this game post ending that is post credits rolling and post me beating the last boss this is my fourth this is my sample series so I showcase games in either 4k and or HDR for either the PlayStation 4 Pro or the Xbox One X. And I do this, I try to do this every week, typically on Fridays. I went through a long period in which I wasn't doing these, but I'm trying to get back on track. So you can see these crickets are very easy to kill and they don't give very much XP as a result. These monks, on the other hand, they do give me something. Now this is a big guy who takes a lot more power to take out than what I've been employing, so I'm going to have to do something a little more substantial. In fact, I'm going to switch over my combat arts to the double Ichimanji. Break his posture. He can he's very much capable of killing me, so I need to be careful. See his posture meter going up. That's the yellow bar underneath his health bar. There we go. And now he has been dispatched. 154 XP, not bad but nothing compared to what I'm capable of getting later. These guys, sort of undead things being infected by scorpions that I need the mortal blade in order to actually kill. Without it, they cannot die. So you use the mortal blade to kill things that cannot die. If it sounds like I'm giving you a hint about something, I am. I guess it's up to you to figure out what I'm hinting at. If you so care to do so. Alright. But yeah, hopefully a view like this gives you an idea as to why I like this, the look of this area. Guess I'm just a sucker for um, bright, bold primary colors, and in a game which is largely drab like this, uh, having an area like this gives you some nice contrast to it. You got your greens, your reds, and during the daytime at least plenty of blue in the sky. So, what I'm going to do, rather than continuing on in this area, is I'm going to hop on the old Homeward Idol, head back to the dilapidated temple. A lot of this stuff is still very fresh in my mind. I finished this game 
a week ago yesterday, after a very long battle with the last boss, one which I almost gave up on, but thankfully I didn't. <laughs> I am back at the dilapidated temple and I'm going to use this thing to show off more of the area more of the game I mean let's go to the sunken valley In the meantime, I'm also working to finish up that uh, skill point that I'm very close to earning. Made mostly of XP that I earned from taking out the last boss. Hopefully you can understand why this is called the Sunken Valley. Because it is a valley that is sunken. Ooh, what's up with these guys? They weren't there before. That guy gave me 600 XP. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my go-to combat arts. Sneak up on these guys because they are annoying. Actually, I believe they might be female, but regardless, they are still annoying. They're basically spearmen with guns. So they're extremely dangerous at both close and long range. Not a fun combination to deal with. Especially when they have bigger, stronger guns than what they have. But my high attack power is still more than enough to dispense with them with relative ease. Yeah. You make extensive use of your grappling hook in this game. These lizards spread poison, so you gotta be careful when dealing with those. Nope, I missed. I bet it's really cold down here, don't you think? Hmm. Is he coming? Is that thing coming back? I don't know. It's a nice snowy particle effects in the air. Eh. Well, there's a really tough enemy right there that I don't particularly want to deal with right now. So, I'm just going to pop the Homeward Idol and showcase another part of the game. How's that sound? You can use your sword to deflect bullets and arrows, as well as other projectiles. Alright, so let's pick another area. 
a little, a little bit of a Sheena castle. Uh, let us go to the abandoned dungeon. Not a very big area, but I'll still showcase it a little bit. So of a dark underground area. We got some zombie type enemies up there that you have to kill twice. So there's lots of water here. Right now I'm being attacked by piranhas, so let's go and deal with them. Don't worry, there's no having to manage your air mechanic in this game. Once you get the ability to dive underwater, you also get the ability to breathe underwater. Dispatch with these guys. Including this guy who's not paying attention at all. Clearly not doing his job. You can smash a lot of these objects, but they don't really give you anything. It's not like Ninja Gaiden or Devil May Cry, where you get stuff for smashing breakable objects, unfortunately. Except, of course, for the satisfaction of having done so. It does feel good. Stabbed me. Okay, please get up. Not sure what he did there, but he's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now he's extra dead. And he gave me 600 XP and enough to get my next skill point. You see this thing? This is an elevator. And I just called it. Look at that. An ancient feudal Japanese elevator. Going up. Four floor, menswear. You might recognize this spot, because I was here only minutes ago in the previous video. <laughs> This world is, in fact, quite interconnected. Alright. Let's travel to the next interesting area. How about the Ashina Depths? I will start at the Mibu Village. Because I think that this is the more interesting looking area. This is basically a village um, that is uh, full of a whole bunch of zombified villagers. And this was one of my most recent uh, stomping grounds for grinding out XP. Because you've got these almost endlessly spawning villagers 
They give you a lot of XP individually and obviously collectively. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but there are dozens of these things down here. And I'm not exaggerating. You can get dozens of kills like that in this area. I'm not going to be doing that here, because I'm here to show off the game environment, and not just me um, relentlessly murdering the same enemies over and over again, which is all grinding is. I, but this is one of the more interesting looking areas of the games. And hopefully you get an idea as to why I chose the um the whirlwind attack as my base attack, because you can take out a lot of enemies at once with it. Now eventually these villagers will stop spawning. But that takes a while. Alright, moving on. As you can see, this is a seaside or lakeside village. Fishing village, I assume. Actually, this area was the main part of my grinding operation because after you kill a certain uh, enemy over there, four of those ghostly specter enemies that give you 600 XP each would appear and I would just go ahead and stab and kill those things. But I'm not going to do that today. Instead, I'm going to stab this guy with the bell. These guys are annoying because they spread fear, and fear is the quickest way of dying in this game. Quickest of the status effects, anyway. So when your fear, your fear meter fills up completely, you just die. Alright. As you can see, we have a water wheel there. Alright. Now I'm going to run off to the last uh, area of the game that I want to show off. Which is in fact the last area of the game in general. The Fountainhead Palace. Which it's actually possible to beat this game, quote unquote, using bunny ears. Making bunny ears with five fingers. It's actually possible to beat this game without ever getting to this area. If you choose one. The uh, shortest of the four possible endings. Which I did not. And I did use. Ex I did make extensive use of guides. And YouTube videos to help me get through this game. Especially the more difficult bosses. You see this? This is a giant rope creature. Like a giant Groot, perhaps, who brings you to the temple, to this area, the Fountainhead Palace. It's an interesting thing to show off in this game. Look at the detail on that. It really looks like it's made out of straw, doesn't it? It's because it is. Zoom in on the detail there if I can. Alright, here's where I fought the corrupted monk and got killed by it many times. Until I eventually killed it. Persistence is the key to this game. Time and persistence. 
Now I'll take a look at that. The Fountainhead Palace. Grab the monocular. And I wonder where all that water is falling towards. Or where it's coming from, even. No fall damage there. Now, I first arrived here, there was an annoying guy with a very long range, very high powered shock cannon who would fire at me pretty much no matter where I was in the water from that perch right there, that broken off tree limb. Very annoying to deal with. No else is annoying these fish guys because they suck the life out of you and make it make you incapable of fighting or even running away. Really, they are probably the most dangerous enemies in the game, not on their own. But if you find yourself incapacitated by them with other enemies around you, they will. Those other enemies will kill you almost immediately. So you gotta take extra care when around those things. There's also some fish in this water that do the same thing to you. Hit the dodge button slash run button to make yourself swim faster. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually sidestep that area and go underwater here. There's in fact an underwater cave, which is the way you progress through this part of the game. Here is where the great rainbow cart, or the great, yeah, the great rainbow cart carp is, or at least was, anyway. I wonder what happened to it. <laughs> I guess check out that video of my daily long play stream where I dealt with it. But you basically had to sneak past it when it was still here to get to this area. And to this idol. Bunch of dead bodies here. Yeah, I am at the top of the palace. It automatically switches to night vision mode when you're in dark or interior environments like that. We got some lightning based enemies here. I want to shoot 
lightning at me so I can shoot it back at him. Unfortunately, I got shocked by it instead. It's actually very tricky to do. And now I'm dead because I fell off into off a cliff. I'm dead for real. <laughs> oh well. And I lose. Oh, I actually don't lose anything because of that unseen aid. Well, that's pretty rare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to that spot and fight those things again. And this time we're feeling. I'd like to end this video on a high note if possible. That didn't really do all that much in terms of damage, did it? give myself the high ground. Nope, I jumped at the wrong time. If I can take out one of them, it might be easier. be locked on to them. That thing's just missing me. A thousand XP for that one enemy. That is a lot. Nope, I failed to reverse it. There we go, at least I sent it away from me anyway. this item because it's something I had not grabbed. Ooh. I guess that could have been useful earlier, but I'll take it now. There we go. I didn't hit him with it, but still. Or her, whatever that thing is. And now I can stab it in mid-air. And it jumps. So yeah, I guess I'm going to call it a video here, folks. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate when people take time out of their day to watch my videos and streams. Just as a quick reminder, I do a daily long play stream just about every day at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm currently playing through Super Mario Galaxy 2 on the Nintendo Wii, which I'll pick up this Sunday at 11 a.m. I do that from Sunday to Thursday. I do a retro stream on Monday night at 8 p.m., a modern stream on Wednesday night at 11 p.m., and occasional 4K and or HDR uploads on Friday. So next Friday, I'm going to start a new game plus of this game and show off the beginning of Secure Shadows Die Twice on the Xbox One X. And until then, thank you so much for watching, and take it easy.